Hi guys, this is the one with Bear. Today, as well as the next few weeks, we are going to be talking about the thing that I potentially like more than my Bear, Clip Studio Paint. Wow, I genuinely feel terrible saying that. Why would I even say that? It's not true. Clip Studio Paint is an incredibly versatile drawing and painting software that I use for all of my professional work. So I'll be nerding out on, I mean, covering all the fun features that I use the most. And the tablet we're using today is the Wacom One. I absolutely love this affordable display tablet from Wacom. For more information on it, you can check out my highlighted Instagram stories covering my unboxing, my comparison and review, as well as the Q&A. And no, I'm not changing my name to the one with one. Without further ado, here's the first feature of the series, brushes and customizations. Are you a traditional artist getting into digital painting and just can't figure out the panels? Or did you come from Photoshop background and are panicking because you can't find your mixer brush? Or are you really bored and have nothing better to do since we're all trapped at home? Either way, I got you covered. Lip Studio Paint's brush customization is actually very streamlined. All you need to understand is the subtool detail. When you first start up Clip Studio Paint, your interface is going to look like this. There are two panels that you will see, the subtool as well as the tool property. For better viewing, I customized my workspace to show more subtools and moving the tool property to the right because I'm right-handed. Clip Studio Paint brushes are sorted into five different tools. Pen, pencil, brush, airbrush, and decoration. And under each tool icon, you will see the subtool folders such as watercolor, realistic watercolor, thick paint, India ink, and customizable folders. You can simply customize your folder by dragging your favorite brush to the top side to create a new folder and then to drag more brushes into the folder. And when you're changing tools, you will notice the tool property on the side keeps changing attributes. Don't panic. It may seem really complicated, but you will understand why soon. On the bottom right hand side of the tool property, you will see a little wrench icon. Click on that. It will show you the subtool detail. And the thing that is controlling whether or not an attribute will show up in your tool property panel is the eye icon in front of the attribute. If you click this off, it's going to disappear from the tool property panel. And the reason why this feature is so useful is because you don't necessarily need every single attribute to be showing on the tool property all the time because they clutter up space just like this. That gives me an anxiety. <laughs> the default brushes in Clip Studio Paint already optimize the type of attributes you may need in different types of brushes. For example, for the gouache brush, you'll probably want to constantly be changing the amount of paint that's loaded on your brush. And for the realistic brushes, you'll probably want to change the paper texture. But should you wish to change the attributes visible to you in your watercolor brush, all you have to do is go into subtool detail. For example, you wanted the amount of paint, you can always just make that visible to you. And if you just thought to yourself, how come that was grayed up? Good for you, because I did that on purpose. Now we're going to be talking about color mixing attribute in Clip Studio Paint. The core difference in blending property in Clip Studio Paint's brushes are blending mode and color mixing. And these two cannot coexist. If you enable one, the other one must die. And remember, just because you click on the eye icon in front of an attribute doesn't mean it's going to activate it. All it does is making it visible to the tool property panel. Color mixing is a self-blending feature that a lot of traditional artists will find very intuitive to use. But if you come from Photoshop background, this may be the first thing that throws you off, especially if you don't use the mixer brushes in Photoshop. What it does is depending on how much pressure you're applying to your pen, it will blend itself out. For example, this is the smooth watercolor brush under the watercolor folder. If you pick another color and you want to blend into that color, instead of having to color pick in the middle, all you have to do is press down hard for a hard edge and then release the pressure on your pen to blend. And the same exact brush, if you turn off color mixing, it's going to behave just like a Photoshop hard round brush or a soft round brush. 
And if you need that blending property back, all you have to do is to check that little box and it'll come right back. With color mixing turned off, we get the blending modes. Blending mode is the default attribute that comes with a realistic watercolor brushes in Clip Studio Paint. The default blending mode for a realistic watercolor brush is multiply, which means every stroke that you make, it's going to add on top of existing color. But you can also change this to something else, such as replace alpha. So for example, right here, I have a solid indigo color. Oh no, not indigo, but whatever color. I'm clearly an artist. And then I have a blue color that's underneath it on another layer. But I can go ahead and replace the alpha of this red so that the blue will show through. Watercolor edge is also a really nice attribute that can imitate the border of watercolor. And if you find a round shape to be too boring, which I do, you can go into brush tip, material, add a brush tip, Choose whatever asset that you have, and now your brush is going to have a different shape. But now I feel like the shape is a little bit too even, giving me that non-organic look. What I can do is I can go into the angle, click on the side, and say random. So now it's going to randomize the angle of the shape. Or if I want to space out these fuzzy edges, what I can do is I go into stroke, and then instead of the narrow one, I make it fixed, and then I can increase the gap between the shape. Well, maybe that's too wide. <laughs> there you go, a little bit better. So now that I'm liking the look of this brush, I can go ahead and not save onto this one, but right click on the original brush and say duplicate subtool, pick a name, hi, and then I say save all settings to default. You don't want to save over the original brush. Always, always, always keep an original brush. Okay, there you go. And now we can revert this back to the original. We have a new brush. Also, the little icon next to each attribute is what is being used to control the attribute. Is a pen pressure, tilt, velocity, or at random? One of the best thing about Clip Studio Paint's brush engine is that you can design pressure curve for each individual brush. For example, G-Pen is the default brush, and based on the G-Pen, I simply change the pressure curve to a little bit more like climbing action, whatever you want to call it. With Wacom 1's 4000 pressure level, I can do something so extreme such as tiny, tiny, tiny skinny line to really thick line. So that is the customization and interface for Clip Studio Paint. I must catch myself before this turns into a two hour long tutorial, but there's just so much flexibility and ways to customize your brushes and Clip Studio Paint that I'm very passionate about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm the one with Bear. I will see you next week. Are you still mad at me?